Yeah. This, this ring is a series of many rings that Swami has made for me over the years. The first rings were silver with his picture. I used to have lots of scratches on his ring, which I wore all the time. And, and Ted, I used to think that every scratch on the ring was Swami taking some of my karma. That's a nice theory. And one day when I videotaped Swami in the interview room in 1978, there was a man in front of me and Swami's bawling him out because he has the same ring, same vintage, full of scratches. And he looks at the man and he says, oh, Swami, I'm very careless, this man says. Yes, and Swami says, you're very careless. Same ring. When he saw my ring, Swami said, very good, very nice. <laughs> How we present ourselves, how we see Swami, it's a reflection, reaction, resound again and again and again. Well, no, here's, here's so much fun. In, the, in 78, behind the construction of the college, I'm up at the balancing rock and I say to Swami inwardly, Swami, I've taken a hundred steps towards you. How about taking one towards me? How about an interview? Just then Gopal, who put the furniture in the, in the university, drives up in a taxi at the foot of the college construction, and he says, Swami wants to see you. <laughs> and I'm wearing a, a crystal japa mala on my neck. Mm -hmm. That crystal japa mala, when Swami made it, it had 111 beads instead of 108. And I said to Swami, and, but there were two beads with nothing separating them. So I said, that was Swami and I, nothing separates us. So it had 110 beads. I worked with that Japa Mala for six months. It was crystal Japa Mala, radiant bluish green, purple green light was emanating out of it. And that eventually disappeared the night before I was going to go see Swami. And he said to me, for me, at that time, Japa Mala, not necessary, just do such and such inside. Jack Lechner, a Sai Baba devotee since the late 1970s, Jack was one of the few devotees permitted to do early video recordings of Baba's interviews with his followers. Jack's stories with Baba are numerous and they are legendary. Jack is from Wyndham, New York, and spent many years traveling back and forth to Baba's ashram in Puttaparthi, India. In New York City for a while, Jack had his own cable television program featuring stories and interviews about Sri Satya Sai Baba. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview was recorded in Troy, New York, in May 2012. It's really a pleasure to talk to you. We've known each other for a long time. I don't know where to begin. I guess I want you to hold up your ring to the camera and tell me a little bit about the story about how you came to be in possession of this ring. Come in a little bit farther, a little higher. There we go, that's, that's perfect. All right. Tilt it this way a little bit. There you go. How? What's the story of this ring in Sai Baba? Am I beginning? Yeah. This this ring is a series of many rings that Swami has made for me over the years. The first rings were silver, with his picture, mm -hmm. with his picture, and <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> the first ring he made was the silver with his picture. And, I used to have lots of scratches on his ring, which I wore all the time. And, and Ted, I used to think that every scratch on the ring was Swami taking some of my karma. That's a nice theory. And one day when I videotaped Swami in the interview room in 1978, there was a man in front of me and Swami's bawling him out because he has the same ring, same vintage, full of scratches. And he looks at the man and he says, oh, Swami, I'm very careless, this man says. Yes, and Swami says, you're very careless. Same ring. When he saw my ring, Swami said, very good, very nice. <laughs> How we present ourselves, how we see Swami, it's a reflection, reaction, resound again and again and again. So as I was seeing it as him taking my karma, it was good what was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first ring. The second ring, I said, Swami, if you make another ring for me, let it have your picture as well as mine. And also, Swami, would you please tilt the ring so that when I'm wearing it on my left hand, you're looking me in the eye and not over my shoulder. Well, Swami, there's a, the stories go on, but 
he makes another ring, almost gives it to somebody else. And in the ring, it only has his picture, but it's tilted, so he's looking me in the eye, not over my shoulder. Many months later, I'm in New York, and Indra Devi is talking about raising money to build a temple for Sai Baba. I say to her, you know, privately, I say, in there, uh, uh, I say, we don't really ask for money in Swami's name. She went to the group, which were not all side devotees, and she corrected it. And lovingly, this was all done privately, not to embarrass. And the next day, I'm walking along the 79th Street boat basin where I was living uh, for a number of years then, and Swami's head, like a lingam, disappeared and face disappeared on this ring. And I said, well, maybe it was none of my business to say anything to her. Maybe it was, but I, but I said, Swami, but I did it as privately as I could, not to embarrass. And uh, the next day, I'm walking down in the sun, and in this oval, missing Swami's face, is my face reflected in his form. Oh my goodness, what a story, what a great story. What I want to know now, Jack, is how you first came to Swami, when you first saw him, and you were mentioning right before we started the role on the camera, what he first said to you. So when did you first have Swami come into your life? I first heard from Swami at a conference, a, a, a workshop, with a guy by the name of Ken Kais, who wrote The Hammock to Higher Consciousness. Mm -hmm. Spent a weekend with Ken. And uh, Ken uh, autographed a book, dedicated a book to Hilda Charlton that lived with Sai Baba for many years. And I asked, where would I go to continue meditation and work? And they suggested Hilda Charlton. So I went to see her at St. Luke's Church in Greenwich Village. And uh, she was talking about all the miracles that Sai Baba made and everything else. But Ted, I... The, what was the year approximately again? Uh, that would be 1975. Okay. And I said, I said, but I was interested in what he stands for, not, not all the miracles. And uh, the second, third time I went to hear Hilda, she said, I have a little book of Sai Baba sayings. And whoever, we're in the auditorium of uh, St. Luke's Church in Greenwich Village. She says, whoever comes closer to the number I have in mind of 320 people was all we could hold in the auditorium, in the basketball arena. Whoever comes closest to the, to the number I have in mind will win this book of Swami sayings. My hand leaped up and I said, 27 Hilda, she says, that's the book. You got it. So I got this little book asking, what does he stand for? What does he say? Not the miracles. And first thing, when I opened up the book, it was directions to Prashanti Nilium. So this was 1975. Na 1975. 1976. Uh, uh, around the end of 75, David Hearn Thomas, who I brought to Hilda, went to see Sai Baba. Mm -hmm. Other people on our group was Philip and Diane Bowden, who are part of the Sai organization today. Uh -huh. They were with Ken Kai's workshop. But when, I, when David came back from his first trip to see Swami, he brought me a picture of Swami's. I was living at that time on 3rd Avenue and 31st Street, and I... Uh, was being rushed to go out for dinner. And I wanted to meditate. At that time I was doing TM meditation. And so I took the picture and I quickly framed it. But in my haste, the price tag was inside of the glass. And I took off my watch, 20 minute meditation for the TM at that time. And when I came out of meditation, the price tag on the inside of the glass was gone. And so was my watch. <laughs> How did that happen? That watch was gone for months and months and months. I got the idea. I was working in Pleasantville, New York. My background was in medical electronics. I was traveling all over the country dealing in some advanced medical electronic work. And uh, I decided I was going to go see Sai Baba one day. And I called home and say, I decided to go see Sai Baba today. And my friend there said, your watch came back today. So there's no coincidence that that happened to reappear at the time you were going to go see Sai no Baba. No, no coincidences. We're, we're going to limit our time, uh, the best I know how, by I want you to give us, you can give us so much wonderful detail, but I want to get to the meat of the matter. So let's go directly to Prashanti Nilayam your first time before he ever spoke to you. What was your initial reaction to seeing him in the forum? First time, I, uh, there's all kinds of wonderful details of how I got there on that, on April the 23rd. 
He was not giving darshan. It was 110 degrees in the shade in Brindavan. Mm -hmm. uh, they were building the college in Brindavan, and Swami came out to see the construction. So I was told by Jack Hislop's sister-in-law uh, that we should go down there and see that. And I went uh, to watch, to watch uh, Swami's checking things out. As soon as I got there, I went to the gate, and they were passing out little packets of abudi. I didn't know what that was all about, really. Again, I was trying, getting first-hand experiences rather than reading other people's experiences. Uh, and so I had this little packet of abudi, and everybody's lined up to see Swami walking by. Somebody calls out, is there a healer here? Is there a healer here? I get up quietly, the little packet of a booty, I give it to this girl, I go back and sit down quietly. I'm sitting there, Swami walks by, I have a note for him. Swami, I wish to speak to you about clarity of thought, word, and deed, and, nine, and seven other things. I used to ask him ten things on a list. And he walked by in front of me and uh, smiled on April 23rd, 110 degrees in the shade, he walks by. He makes the booty for the man just to my left. He takes my note, he walks 10 feet, and he look, turns around, looks back at me, and he says, you wish to speak to you. Uh, Those were the first words that I heard that Swami said to me directly. And did you understand the significance of those words? The significance of those words is, is that, well, see, my experience of such as Sai Baba is he's universal. He's not the Indian, he's not this, he's not that. He's the universal Christ consciousness, however you want to, beyond any religion, beyond any limitation that we might place on anyone. To Jack, he, he comes to you the way he comes to you, and he might come differently to somebody else. I would imagine he brought you love, he brought you joy, he brought you bliss. Sometimes he uses a sledgehammer on people, sometimes he breaks your heart. Did he ever break your oh, heart? Oh, for sure. One day, I, I had the privilege of photographing him in 1976. I, had, I, I photographed his picture in the Maharani's room next door to mm -hmm. the ashram and I had a, a still camera and I asked him when am I going to get an interview and in the picture when it came out, I had a beard then, I only had a mustache in the picture that came out and the camera was on my shoulder. Oh my. my third trip in 1978, I brought a video camera and that was the first time he spoke to me. That was the first time, pardon me, that I had an interview, it was in 1978. Uh, your question again. How many times has he roughed you up? Has he ever I would say, your heart? I would say, I would say, I would say once. Okay. Once in night, and once after I had done a lot of videos of Swami and photographs and everything else, one day Swami comes up in Darshan and he says, uh, go for an interview. And I say, Swami, can this person go? And, and Swami says, yes, he can go. And then I say, Swami, can this other person go? Swami says, you sit down. And people were crying around me because of the firmness in his voice. You sit down. He was pointing to the other person? No, to me. Okay. He said the second person couldn't come. He t told me, Swami said, you sit down. And he walks a few steps, he looks at me and he says, attachment, very bad habit. Oh, wow. I spent the rest of the day, Ted, in my room reading everything about bad habits and how to correct it. I spent the whole day, as I'm walking to my room, another devotee says, a Korean plane with 230 or 70 people just got shot down. I just got shot down. So you know the actual date is when that Korean plane was shot down. I went and I spent the whole day introspection, working, attachment, very bad habit. There's a sign of the beautiful columns that they had uh, a little signpost, one of the uh, slogans was, from this moment on, drop all bad habits. They don't contribute the least to joy. So all of a sudden, these signs were showing up all over your life. Well, that's, that's right. But now I go to my room, the end, evening darshan, Swami comes back again, he looks at me, and he points, he says, you go, but only one. I go into the interview room, and it's the Subarau family who started the Sai Baba Center at the UN off of a cable show that I was putting of Swami in New York City. And it was the Subarau family, and I've never had a translator with Swami. Before this trip, I said, Swami, can I have a translator? Gokak was called in to be the translator 
for that particular interview. Now, why did you need a, a, a translator then? Uh, Didn't. But I asked, I never had one. <laughs> Swami always spoke to me one to one directly. Sure. Yeah. Swami never disappointed me. If he said, I'll see you tomorrow, he saw me tomorrow. Over all those years, from 75 to 78, to all, all the times that you've been to India to see Baba. First of all, about how many trips have you made? I, I, I used to go every year for, uh, for uh, like 10 years. And you'd stay for maybe a week or two for your vacation? I would stay longer sometimes. Would it you? depends on when I was working or yeah. not. But I, my, my first trip, 76, and then 77, I was, uh, that's a whole amazing story, how I got a ticket, I was invited to 77. Uh, 77, I videotaped, photographed the last Abby Shakem that was done in the ashram. Wow. I passed on those tapes to someone in India. And uh, in all those years, did you have many one-on-one -on -one experiences with Swami? Oh, yeah. I experienced Swami universally. Well, that's good, I, I and mean, it's great. In and fact, I also experienced him face to face. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's been the case. I've, you Has know, your faith? Well, no. Your... Here's here's so much fun. In the in seventy eight, behind the construction of the college, is a balancing rock way up over the college. Have you ever seen it? I think I have. Okay, I'm up at the balancing rock there. The women with the bricks are walking in their heads and they're building the construction. The men are doing whatever they're doing. I'm up at the balancing rock and I say to Swami inwardly, Swami, I've taken a hundred steps towards you. How about taking one towards me? How about an interview? Just then Gopal, who put the furniture in the, in the university, drives up in a taxi at the foot of the college construction and he says, Swami wants to see you. <laughs> I tell the two people with me, one was Lee Hewlett, one was this other film. You had just been, said that. Pardon me? You had just implored I had just said, Swami, I have taken a hundred steps towards you. How about taking one towards me? He then, Gopal, Gopal had a taxi to drive, but he couldn't find it. He had to get a taxi and find out where I was. It's almost like a time word, Tim. Well, I was going to ask you before you told me that story, and I think I know the answer. Has your faith ever wavered? Have you ever gone through depressing or gloomy times when you wondered whether or not Swami was everything you knew him to be or Only on? the organization. <laughs> and that Only the organization. And that's a different entity altogether, so But that's part of it. But Swami Swami has always encouraged me to directly. I mean I, I used I can tell you times that he has given me permission to do things the organization never had the time to give me whatever credentials, but then it happened. We were able to do things. Once I'm in Madras and uh, I'm videotaping Swami with a three-tube professional camera, JVC, orange, and I'm following him in Madras. And all of a sudden, my headset is buzzing. And I'm following Swami in, at the syndrome, and it's buzzing. I stop, Ted. I stop following Swami and I go to the airport and I buy a ticket to go to Bombay. And I'm on the flight with Swami seven rows back with that same camera. How many minutes, hours of video, how many photographs have you taken of Swami over the years? I probably have 400 hours maybe, but I took many more. But Why don't over... you allow the world to see this wonderful video from Well, you? I've been telling, asking, we have 50, well, I, I had a cable show where I used to put Swami on in New York, and I got criticized for putting his darshans on mm -hmm. in New York City on, on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I did that for 16 years, Ted. Oh, I started boy. a show interviewing human potential people one week at a time. It went 16 years. I didn't have help necessarily, but I don't, it doesn't matter. It's but, I, uh, but I'd say it's time again for many people to see this because they've, they've, been, they've been for too long deprived this outside of New York during that one 16 year span. I really believe people should see this. I hope you make some of it available to well, us and we'll put it on. On my birthday, July 13, 2008, my last trip, 2005, I subtitled the group interview of 1978 of Swami speaking English for 45 minutes. I subtitled Double Wedding with, uh, with for, and, and those tapes were given to the digital studio and for Shanti. Somehow on my birthday, not knowing I did it, that three-part interview was put on YouTube on July the 13th. The people didn't know 
that it was me that did it or, what, or didn't even ask permission, and they somehow put it on July 13th. That has 100,000 hits right now. 100,000 visits of just Swami speaking English, part one, two, and three. Recently, um, uh, they put a double wedding on. Is, is that the, the talk that he gave that really covered so many wonderful topics with so many of his beautiful sayings that uh, the, the quality, understandably, couldn't have been that good? Because there, was no, there was no light yeah. in the interview room. There was, the fan was making noise, Ted. There was no tripod. I didn't know that was your video. I actually scarfed that off of YouTube myself. I saw that somebody put subtitles on it, English subtitles on it. You put it on? Jack, Video Jack did. Video I Jack did. I know now, Video Jack. I, I worked with Video Jack and Sight. I knew, I worked with him too. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah, well, he, 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 he put the subtitles on the wedding and that other one. Turn that over to the digital studio. They have it. And I mean, 100,000 visits. Swami points out so many beautiful things. It's a priceless, priceless It's, it's priceless. And, 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 and Swami makes the point when people ask a symbol for, for, for religion. He says there's no, some has a cross, some has a... He says the only symbol is love. The only symbol is love. It's so wonderful. I, it gives me goosebumps because I've seen that piecemeal over the years. See, YouTube, for those people who don't know, only allowed for many years only 10 minute long videos. So somebody took your three parts, somebody took your video and broke it into three parts, uploaded the first part for nine and a half minutes, second part, third part, and then Video Jack added uh, subtitles to it. And then I come along one day with the bright idea, I wake up, why don't I go and assemble all three of those together, edit them seamlessly in one long video. But I have the whole thing. I have, oh, I know, but I had no idea who. I have the whole thing subtitled. Not only that, but I have the transcripts. I used to show this. I showed this whole video of Swami with, with transcripts. I had people do transcripts. And I have the transcripts, I have the video in my archives. That's why I would love if you could visit. But, oh yeah. Well, I'm just saying, there's, to get this going on, how we can serve, sure. say, it's really about, it's, it's not mine. This, we is, know it's, this uh, is 2012, we're sitting here on the campus of a university in Troy, New York, outside of Al Al Albany for a Psy retreat, and uh, Jack and I have seen each other over the years. I'm just saying this information in case anybody wants to go instantly watch it on Soldiers, where you're watching right now. I uploaded maybe less than a year ago what we're talking about, his wonderful video of Swami giving one of the most priceless interviews, chock-a-block full of insightful, blissful comments from Baba in English. It's, it's available right here on this either YouTube or Vimeo channel that you're watching us on right now. And I'd love to see more of your video put you, that way. YouTube, YouTube uh, if you just do a search on Sai Baba interview 1978, mm -hmm. you'll see part one, two, and three coming up. The amazing thing about that, the beginning of the interview, Swami says, how are you? Mm -hmm. I say, very happy, Swami. Swami says, keep it. That was the time he talked about the ring, about the oh, the other guy's scratches, whatever. Sometimes he said that uh, a Shiva Lingam appears. This is before I actually got it on the, my own ring. One of the more profound things that Swami says to us in that interview, we're all here laughing and, and, and uh, is it right? And everybody says, yes. Swami says, no. He says, at, at, uh, at uh, this is a daydream. He says, at night, you, you're sleeping in Prashanti and you're dreaming that you're in California. Your body's in Prashanti in the dream you're in California. Mm -hmm. He said, that's a night dream. This is a daydream. The past, Both the present, dreams. and the future, you are. Yeah. And when he talked about God, he didn't say, There's, the only symbol for God is love. But he didn't say, the only symbol for God is love. He said, the only symbol for God is love. All of us collectively part of the one man. I mean, these are the wonderful things. You know, this is, uh, I'm not doing you justice at all because here under these, we're, we're, we're constricted by the deadlines on our that, side. That's, that's what I was retreat. sharing with you. It's, and, too, and I, it's too precious. And I only have a few minutes left before I have to get off to the next part of the venue because it's chock a block full of wonderful events here in this side. This is side region number one. And you guys know something about putting on great retreats. And so I'm right. happy to be here and I have to move on. But before I leave, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking again on video. Uh, Give me one final send-off that you recall from your many years with Baba that touched your heart in a way that just left um, indelible 
memories for you that you carry with you to this day? A dream. I'm in my room. I have a block representing the world. One I photographed in the United Nations, in the meditation room. I'm going over the block with three by five cards and Vibhuti is manifesting in this dream, in Prashanti. There are three women in a sound booth trying to distract me while I'm doing my work. Al Drucker comes from downstairs in the dream. He says, what are you doing? I told him, I'm just, this is what I use when I make talks. He says, you're not supposed to, and Vibhuti's come in. He says, you're not supposed to, do it. Sai Baba does it. I said to Al Drucker, I said, this is just what I'm doing. I don't, you know, it's, yeah. and when I tasted the, the Vibhuti that was manifesting on these cards in the dream, it was different than any Vibhuti I had ever tasted. When I awakened the next morning, on my lips in my room in Prashanti Nilium was the same Vibhuti in the depth of the dream. Oh my goodness. And then I went to Darshan, and Darshan came over, Swami came over to me with a big smile, and he made Vibhuti <laughs> daydream right in front of me. He made Vibhuti and he put it right in my mouth. The same Vibhuti in the depth of the dream, the same Vibhuti on, those, on my lips when I awakened from the night dream, from his hand to my mouth. Oh my goodness, Jack. What a beautiful story. <laughs> I mean, they go on and on. <laughs> He's, it's, uh, you didn't see the pictures of him manifesting in the house just... Uh, I've, I've shot a couple of pictures Oh no, already. I'm just saying, recently, yeah. he, has shown, and he has had a rainbow ohm in my dining room, and I close up on that, and in the rainbow ohm on my dining room, when I looked at it, it's like a circus Olay where somebody is <laughs> up on top and on top, the guy on top, and there's a guy down below with light coming out of his face, on top is someone with an orange road and an afro. <laughs> That's in my camera, in my pocket. Final, right final question. Yes. Now that his Maha Samadhi is behind us, I'm hearing wonderful gifted speakers who have been with Baba for 40, 50 years talk about their pain that they still have. How is your attachment, your love, your bliss thinking about Sai Baba been affected by his physical form passing? First of all, he said goodbye to me in Wyndham and before I left. He was a passing cloud, came overhead, dark cloud, his face appeared, sunlight. Shruti Baba's face in another cloud over me here in Wyndham, sunlight disappeared. April 21st, 23rd was my Sai Baba birthday. 23rd here, 24th when he was passing there. What he said to me, I haven't gone anywhere, I've just gone everywhere. He has shown me throughout my life of his omnipresence and how he's taking care of each and every one of us so lovingly. He's a living example of love. That to me is, 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 is the passing. Like he never said you can't take Padnamaskar. Years ago they said he's not giving it. No, he said you could take it wherever you are. He was preparing us for, for his releasing the body. Jack Lichner, it sounds like uh, you have maybe just a little more than a passing affinity, affection, and love for Baba. <laughs> it's unlimited, it's unlimited, and he's touching all of us so beautifully in all different ways. Thank you. <laughs> Sai Ram. This is a picture that a friend of mine was singing bhajans in, in Calusa, California, and as he was playing music, Amrita was flowing down Christ's heart. This was in Calusa. Many years later, I hear Swami inwardly say, if somebody's thirsty, give them water, not morality. Just like I got a call from Minnesota, from this man, that Swami just appeared in Calusa in front of hundreds of people, and the first thing he said is, water first, then budgets. Oh, I've been to Calusa, but I didn't see Baba up here there. Okay, what else do you have here in this wonderful little album? Well, you've seen the rings. Uh -huh. You didn't see the wear of the cobra that appeared. The cobra appeared on your Baba ring. On the Baba ring. A cobra. Now, i got to really use my imagination, and I can't go too close. There's to a the... Y and that's like a cobra okay. with a mouth open. Wow, I see, I see, I see. And, and your ring now, let me see your ring. Now it's a cobra again, but it's a little different.
Okay, and at times it's had the initials LC, or LA for Los Angeles. LA, then CA or CIA, which is Concentrated Integrated Awareness. So he gave you that line too, you, that you're CIA. Yes, and also you'll see a little U over his forehead. Uh -huh, I see that. And my cable show was called Ultimately You. Good. It was all about life as a journey from self to self. No, 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 another picture. Okay, Mother Teresa's business card. Yeah. Which she signed is uh -huh. brilliant, beautiful. Oh, that's great. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. And then she signed it. Wonderful. And she's held the Sai Baba ring on numerous occasions. You saw the LA. Yep. And you saw the CIA. And there's just, those are essentially. Uh, I mean, I can show you the Amrita. Oh, and show me, and when's this taken of you? You were a different man then. Yes. And I'm wearing a, a crystal japa mala on my neck. Mm -hmm. That crystal japa mala, when Swami made it, it had 111 beads instead of 108. And I said to Swami, and, but there were two beads with nothing separating them. So I said, that was Swami and I, nothing separates us. So it had 110 beads. I worked with that japa mala for six months it was crystal japamala, radiant bluish green, purple green light was emanating out of it. And that eventually disappeared the night before I was going to go see Swami. And he said to me, for me, at that time, japamala, not necessary, just do such and such inside. Now, tell me about your friends, relatives, co-workers, neighbors. Do they think you're a man obsessed or what? No, I'm, I, they don't take me obsessed, but there's so many wonderful experiences all my life that I'm jack out of the box, and they know that. And uh, that goes on and on. But I, I'm respectful of where other people are at, because Swami makes it very clear that our work is not to proselytize. If somebody's thirsty, give them water, not morality. Mm -hmm. So my, my role is I'm freed from a lot of stuff. I don't have to fix anybody, but... I'm just allowed to be Jack out of the box. So you just radiate your love. I, I, I pray. Jack, thank you. Remember, remember the day I love walked your way. Remember, remember the day I love Walks your way, stretched out his hand.